Okay, so in the last few lessons we learned about um, uh, qualifiers and constants and variables. Although that's not the only thing that we need to learn about uh, our program. We also need to learn things that will help us control the program. We can be able to put all the content that we've put so far where we can create our variable which in our instance can be uh, we use the int or the character uh, component or we can then modify uh, whatever the character or the integer value might be but let's say for instance we want to be able to control a scenario we want to be able to control how certain things happen in the actual program so we can actually be able to create um, a little bit of logic that helps us do that where we've got our variable which is i and then we can be able to state what we want to do okay we learned about operators we learned about uh well, a little bit about operators, but operators will then make a bit more sense when we work with controlling the program. So one such way we can actually control a program is to actually have um, what we call a loop. And a simple loop uh, works this way. We need to put our if, we open and we close our brackets, and then we have um, the, the action that we want to have. So the first set of normal brackets gives us our condition. The next set uh, of brackets gives us the action that we want to have. Okay. So we can then put, um, for example, i is not equal to 0. Okay. As long as i is not equal to 0, we want to have a printf. And our printf, we want it to be able to give us uh, the value of i. So we can then say value of i equals. So put a percentage d. We'll put our new line. If we run this program, we'll be able to see what the value of i is. Although we haven't initialized the value of i, we also haven't uh, called our i in the proper reference. Okay, we'll fix that in a minute. But as you can see, uh, it runs with no problem, which then means our logic um, is correct. That's one other thing that I actually not uh, mentioned as we are working with our, our code, is that if the logic is wrong, you might actually find errors that block you from uh, giving out what you're hoping to get. So I just put a comma and then I put my I. If I run it again, it should be able to still run, but not show me what the the problem might be okay so let's uh, try and initialize uh, our value for i and then in this case now because we were running it without having a value for i it could not uh, return a value but the moment that we initialized our i to be equal to 4 we then could run our program so what this then means now is when we are looking at this particular project, we'll, we'll find out that i is our variable that is unknown, but we initialize it to be equal to 4. And then our control, which is our if. We've got if, we open in brackets, we then put our condition. Our condition is if i is not equal to 0, we close our brackets, and then uh, we open our curly brackets. So it then means in line 7, we are controlling what the value of i is we don't want our i to ever be equal to zero and then our action will then be um the value of i is equal to four so hence that's how our control statement which is our if statement works and this is only a part of our if statement we can have an additional part whereby we are saying in the event that i is equal to zero what do we do okay so let's close the program and then we go to the next branch of our statement we can then put an else we open and we close brackets uh, we put a print if we open and we close brackets 
and then we then say i equals zero so there's no need to actually print our i we can just put it as else i is equal to zero okay so if we reframe our code we say i is now equal to zero and we run it we should then be able to just list the last bit which is the else so our conditions work in this manner we need to state the statement that we want to use for example in this case it's an if we then state our condition then outside of our condition we then have our branch which is the curly brackets and within that branch we want to be able to state the action that we take if the condition that we're looking for is true otherwise if that condition is not true we then go to the else part where we actually then put print i is equal to zero which then means we have actually um, initialized our i to be zero and the first part becomes untrue so in essence we are then pretty much working with the true or false um, element which is also another data type that we can use within our programming which uh, is the boolean but we're actually using the boolean in terms of a conditional statement so this statement will then be looking at various conditions and it will then give us um, a a hint of what uh, our condition will give us and the possible uh, opportunities that we can get from that particular condition so one such scenario might be, let's say uh, a person wants to change their password. We then need to verify that the password that they're using and the password that they have changed don't match. That's the first thing. So we're actually then saying we can then put a condition to say if old password and new password do not match, then change is success successful. Else, if the passwords match, then change was not successful because we don't want the person to repeat the same password that they had and we should also keep a record of the passwords that they had previously so in essence that's how our if statements work however we can be able to then um, make uh, a slightly more detailed uh, if statement whereby we might want to be able to select uh, various things, okay? We might be able to create a program that um, maybe looks into more than just one condition. How do we then do that, okay? Uh, outside of this, instead of having our else at this part, we can then also put another if. And our if should then look into what uh, our condition should be so we can then put another if statement we open and we close brackets we're then saying if i is less than or equal to 10 for example okay we're then saying if i is less than or equal to 10 we want to then be able to uh print the following print Okay, I is between 1 and 10, like that. So we can then be able to put uh, that as our condition. However, for us to then meet this condition, we then need to actually uh, reinitialize our I to maybe something like 6. And then when you run it, Okay, um, I just put the equals on the wrong side. Let's uh, re... Okay, so I had actually put the equal sign on the wrong side. I just needed to put uh, the equal sign and the, and the, and this sign 
on the same platform uh, and uh, here's what we'll then get you then actually realize that we can get the value of i so value of i is equal to 6 and then i is between 1 and 10 however the else statement won't execute because we don't have our i being equal to 0 but in this particular case now we're then saying the first bit is i is not equal to 0 i is between 1 and 10 so in other words here's how we also then um, build our logic as we proceed with our logic or with our control statements however this then means the many more statements that you put for the if you are literally saying you want to check a bunch of conditions in more or less the same execution without actually uh, changing your program so one such scenario might be is it raining is it windy is it sunny so in some instances we can have all three weather elements uh, present where it's raining it's windy and it's sunny or we can have a day where it's sunny and it's raining or it is windy and it's sunny or none of the three so in other words we can then be able to say when we are working with our if statement we can be able to check the different um, instances of a particular condition however this is only the starting bit of our if statement okay and we can then be able to nest our if statement however with our nesting i think i'll do it in uh, a slightly different uh, program because i feel we need to learn uh, the conditional statements themselves and uh, the looping statements themselves as well so after this we can then go into the next uh, conditional statement that we can work with which is our switch case statement okay our switch case statement is exactly the same as our for loop but it works in a slightly different manner whereby we then use uh, a slightly different way of doing things okay so let's say we want to work with our switch case statement here's how we'll then do it we can then be able to uh, put our variable we've got int we've got i that then becomes our variable we then have our print f we open and we close brackets when we open and we close brackets we then say enter choice okay after entering the choice we then want to display what the choices are okay so i can just put a print f and then with my print f i'll do the following one means we want to add we put a a space so for backslash t gives us a space and then we put two we want to edit let's say those are the two options that we want to work with okay we then put our new line and then we can be able to get this input so to get our input we say this scan f and our scan f uh, gets the following which is percentage d we then want to get our i and then we want to use our case statement so our case statement works this way we need a switch that covers the uh, the the cases the individual cases and then outside of that uh, switch we then need to have a case statement where we write case one and then we also write case two so this is how our switch case statement works right outside of the cases we then need to put the content that we want to have so we can have a break which separates the two uh, case statements and then we have a default 
which gives us what the user sees if there is any problem. So we can put a print f, and our print f gives us what the default might be. We need to then put wrong input chosen, like that. And then for this one, we put a print f that just tells us um, we want to edit. We also put a printf there and we say printf. We open and close brackets and then we say add. So that we add to whatever it is that we want to do. So here's how the code works we simply have our variable. We then have our printf statements that tell us what we want to do. We get input using our scanf. We then switch that input between case one and case two and default. So default is not necessarily a case, but it's saying if any of the two case statements fail, we then go to the default. So let's just run it and see how it works. So it tells us enter choice either one or two. I select two, then tells me edit and then it ends right there. So that's how we work with our control statements, the if and the case. Okay, so we've talked about the switch case statement. We've also talked about the if statement. There's two things that I wanted you to just uh, take note of the two statements. We've got um, our condition or rather we've got our variable that we initialize, we've got our condition where our condition then gives us this value. However, in the switch case statement, it's different. We are saying we put our condition in the switch and then the switch um, pretty much gets the variable and then this acts as our condition and then the case statements a match whatever element we are hoping to actually get. So it's not necessarily the same as our if statement where we've got our if and then we've got our condition here and then we've got something that we execute. In this particular case, we've got exactly the same sequence or logic where it's if, then we've got the condition, then we've got the, the branch that executes. However, in this particular case, we actually put um, our variable first we switch that variable and then we've got a case statement that tells us uh, what each of the elements that we want to work with pretty much do. And then we've got a default that gives us um, the default element that we are hoping to get. Okay. So we then move on to the next uh, type of statement, which is a follow up to these two statements. And it does pretty much the exact same uh, thing that uh, our if and our case statement does. So the next statement we want to work with is a, a go-to statement. So with our go-to statement, it pretty much does uh, the following. We want to be able to create our scenario whereby we can say we've got int um, x. Our x, we then want to initialize our x. Okay, so we then say scanf, we open and we close brackets, uh, we close the column, we then put our percentage d, we put a comma, we put an ampersand, we then put our variable, which is x. Okay. So in this particular instance now, we then want to be able to say, um, the moment we start, okay, we want to be able to put uh, a statement that we'll be able to use so that we can uh, know where we are going to reference. Okay. So maybe let's actually put a print f there. We open and we close brackets, put a semicolon, we then say enter 
number. Not bad. We put a column, we put a new line. And before this printf statement, we put a go to statement. No, we actually need to put our statement. So we then um, have our statement as, for example, number. That can be our statement. And then uh, after this, we put our go to. That way, our go to. So if we run our uh, program, oh, my mistake, I did not put a printf there, that's why I was getting an error. Okay, let's run it. Okay, now I think we, we've got what we need. So I said uh, we put our number on line 7, we put our print F, enter number, we put our scan F, we then get the number, and then we go to number. So what this then means, I can put 9, press enter. I can put as many numbers as is possible because it keeps taking me back to number. Or it keeps taking me back to print F, enter num. So I can enter this repeatedly as many times as is possible. So that's how my go to statement works. Okay. Uh, in this particular instance, I would have created an endless loop, if I can put it that way. Because it, at every given point in time, um, if I put my code in this particular manner. I'll continuously enter the same process over and over and over and over again. However, I can also be able to put different instances of my go-to based on how the logic of the code is running. The logic of this particular code can't really give me much, but I'm sure as we're proceeding with the uh, learning, we'll be able to see a go-to in a different instance. And for the purposes of this example, I think we would have done uh, justice to ourselves and have done something that can show you how the go statement, go-to statement works. So we just said we simply put um, our condition or our statement that we want, which is the number, and then we use our go-to so that we select the number. However, this then becomes similar to our case statement whereby we are saying the moment we put this, our case would then work almost the same as our go-to because we are saying when we enter the number that we've put, we can either go to case 1 or case 2 simply because of the case and also the switch that uh, contains all the elements that are in the case which includes case 1, case 2 and default. So we can be able to actually work with that uh, in our particular system. The next uh, set of statements that we want to work with are pretty much on program control as well, but they'll be working on um, controlling the program itself without having uh, to not continuously change certain things. Uh, let's work on that particular code and we see how the next statement works. So for example, the next statement we want to work with is a for statement. And our for statement uh, does the following. Our for statement uh, will still need a variable. We put our variable as i, okay? And then we put a for. And then in the condition, we can then now put three branches of the condition. So we can actually put it like that and it still gives us uh, a value, okay, with no with no conditions. So that's the first instance of our for statement.
However, uh, I'm just going to run it so that you see how it works. So I put a percentage D, I put a new line, I put a comma, and then I put my I. If I run it, this program should give us uh, some results. But as you can see now, I've created an endless loop. It's literally just going to be trying to get a value for I and not getting that value. And then it creates an endless loop, which is similar to what we created in the go to statement. But however, in this particular statement, I can also be able to um, modify it or stop it. So how do I stop that? I stop it by then saying my i is equal to zero so that it starts at a certain point my i is less than 10 and then my i iterates like that so if i run the program in this particular instance now i can be able to give a boundary or boundaries where my i starts from to where my i ends so this then becomes a different set of conditions whereby we are saying we simply put a for statement and we then say i is equal to zero i is less than 10 i iterates and then we display all the possible values of i and we are good to go